Hello guys, welcome to another day of uh, homework recitation. Uh, the homework today is homework 2 and uh, we'll be focusing on some vectors and motion problems. So the first one is the focus on concept question 01 and it says uh, what is the difference between distance and displacement. So this displacement is a vector while distance is not a vector, very correct. Distance is a vector while displacement is not a vector. No, that's wrong. There is no difference between the two concepts. They may be used interchangeably. That's also wrong. So displacement is distance moved in a specified direction. So once you specify direction, it becomes displacement. But if I just mention I walk two miles, two miles is distance. I don't have to mention direction. But once I attribute direction to the two miles, I walk two miles to the library. I walk two miles east of the campus. I was Once I add a direction to my two miles, to my distance, then... The direction plus that distance becomes a displacement, and it's a vector quantity because of its direction. Okay, the next question says a boat moves three kilometers due north and then moves one kilometer due south. So let's see how that works. So three kilometers due north, don't forget this is your north, east, west, um, sorry, east, west, south. So the boat moves three kilometers due north, three kilometers, and then moves back on the same line, one kilometer due south. So what is this displacement from where he started to the end? Two kilometers due north. Is that okay? So two kilometers due north would be the correct uh, would be the correct answer. But they're asking us for the average velocity. Ah, so is that is the displacement two kilometers due north? So what is the average velocity divided by the time half an hour? So average velocity is total displacement. Total displacement divided by time gives us average velocity. Average velocity. So total displacement we just got to be two kilometers north divided by time 0 0.5 hours. Is that okay? So two kilometers divided by 0 0.5 that gives us four kilometers per hour. Okay? Okay? Half an hour, 0 0.5 hours, that's four kilometers per hour due north. That's the direction for velocity because velocity is also a vector quantity okay so you first of all get the displacement from here you move three kilometers north you move one kilometer south then the displacement is two kilometers divided by the time 0 0.5 hours and you give you four kilometers per hour for that okay let's look at the next problem <clears throat> only one of the following is possible for a moving object which one the velocity is zero at one instant and is decreasing while the acceleration is also eastward. So, oh sorry, the velocity is zero at one instant and the acceleration is not zero at that instant. The velocity is zero, acceleration is not zero. That is possible for projectile motion. I will explain how that is possible. So for projectile motion, an object is moving in a trajectory like this. The velocity keeps reducing, reducing, reducing until it gets here. So at this point, the velocity has vy and vx at every point. vy and vx at every point. At this point, vy goes to zero, but it also has vx. So that point, the velocity or component y is zero, but it has acceleration. g is always downwards everywhere. g is always downwards everywhere. So it's possible for you to have acceleration at a point, but your, one of your velocity components is zero. So A is correct. So since only one is possible, it means all the rest are wrong. So let's see how the rest are wrong. The velocity is directed eastwards and is decreasing. So once your velocity is decreasing, it means your acceleration is the opposite direction. That's what causes you to decelerate. Is that okay? So why the acceleration is also eastward? Ah, so that's not possible. For your velocity to be decreasing in one direction, your acceleration has to be the opposite direction. The velocity is directed northwards and is increasing. So if your velocity is increasing, then your acceleration has to be in the same direction. Acceleration is zero. No way. The velocity is constant at all times, and the acceleration is not zero. No way. Once your velocity is constant, your acceleration has to be zero. The velocity is directed eastward, and is increasing, while the acceleration is directed westward. No way. For your velocity to be increasing, your acceleration and your velocity has to be in the same direction. Has to be in the same direction. So the correct answer is A. Is the only one that is correct for this. Okay? Next, uh, problem 02, chapter, uh, chapter 02, problem 04. You step onto a hot beach with your bare feet. 
A nerve impulse generated in your foot travels through your nervous system at an average speed of 154 meters per second. How much time does it take for the impulse which travels a distance of 1.63 meters to reach your brain? So they are looking for time. But we are giving average speed. So average speed is total distance divided by time. So average speed is total distance divided by time. So average speed is given to be 154. The total distance is 1.63 meters divided by time, t. So t becomes 1.63 divided by 154. And that will give us the answer there, 0 0.0106 seconds, OK? 0 0.0106 seconds. So let me verify that on my calculator. I put the answers there so we can cross-check to make sure we are doing it right. So let's divide 1.63 divided by 154. So I'm going to do that here, 1.63 divided by 154, 0 0.0106, perfect. Okay, now let's go to chapter 02, problem 05, this next problem here. The data in the following table describes the initial and final positions of a moving car. The elapsed time for each of the three pairs are the same, 0 0.54 seconds. So we are asked to find um, the average velocity in magnitude and direction for each of them. Is that okay? Is that okay? So let's see. For the direction, we're going to use the sign to convey the direction. So let's see what happens. Initial position, final position. So what is the average speed? Is that okay? So average speed or average velocity is final position minus initial position divided by time. So I'm going to do V average is X final minus X initial divided by time. So for the first part, it is 6.1 minus 2.3 divided by the time it's given to be 0 0.54 seconds. And that will give us the answer we have there, 7.04 meters per second. It's a plus. The next one is 1.9 minus 5.6. divided by 0 0.54, then that will give us minus 6.85 meters per second. And then the last one is 6.7 minus minus 3, minus minus 3 over 0 0.54. So that's 6.7 plus 3 over 0 0.54, and that will give us the 17.96 meters per second. Okay, so that's how you get it. Final minus initial divided by the time you're given. Final minus initial divided by the time you're given. And it just gives you straightforward the, the answer you need. Okay. Next question. A meteorite is speeding through the atmosphere, traveling east at 23.6 kilometers per uh, second while descending at 15.4 kilometers per second, what is its speed? So they're looking for the net speed or the resultant speed. So you have the x component and the y component, so they are perpendicular. And you know once you have two vectors perpendicular, your resultant is the square root of sum of the squares. So it's going to be 15.4 square plus 23.6 square square root. So when you do that, it will just give you 28.2 meters per second. And that's just the average. They didn't ask for the direction, they just want the speed. So if they wanted the velocity, then we're going to find the angle of this. If they wanted the velocity, so I know it's going east at 23.6 kilometers per second, so this kilometers per second. And it's going down at 15.4 kilometers per second. So my net will be this. Is that okay? My net will be that, and I have to find this angle theta or alpha, depending on if I want to use um, south of east or east of south. Is that okay? Okay. But here, they just want the magnitude, so we'll just get that. 28.2 meters, kilometers per second. Now, next one is a baseball player hits a triple and ends up on the third base. A baseball diamond is a square, each side of length that. So let's see how to picture this problem. So you have to first of all picture the problem, draw a diagram, and then you're going to have an idea of what is happening. So let's say this is the, the base diamond, 6 square, 
So the same size. So the home plate is here, home. I put H. And then you have three bases in the other corner. So this first base, second base, and third base. So the boss player hit the triple and ends up in the third base. So he started from home and end up in the third base. So you went here, 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 and end up in the third base. And then the question is, what is the magnitude of his displacement? So when you start from here and end up here, your displacement is from here to here. But they want the magnitude only. So it's just going to be the side of one of the square. So the, 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 the one of the sides of the square. So each of side is 27.51. So the displacement is the same, 27.517 or 27.52. So the displacement is just from here to here, which is one side of the square, which is 27.52 meters. And that's it. Is that okay? Because he can hear, hear, hear. So this is the displacement. And that's the magnitude. Okay? So we don't need to worry about direction because they didn't ask us. Somebody can draw their home, put their home here, first base, second base, third base. So the direction will be different. So since they didn't tell us, the directions of how to place the points, direction does not really matter. They want only magnitude. So the magnitude can, will be the same for whichever how you, where you put your home or where you put your first, second, or third place. Okay, let's go to the next problem. So you say, bed watcher meanders through the woods, walking 0.758 kilometers due east, 0.37 kilometers due south. So you can see. So the first one due east, the other one due south, B, leg. And C leg in the direction 78.6 north of west. You can see from west you move north of west. Is that okay? So 8.6. The time required for this trip is 1.716 hours. Determine the magnitude of the watcher's displacement and average velocity. So let's see how to get this. So don't forget these are three vectors. So I'm going to plot this in one point. So it's easy for us to get our components of uh, displacement. And just take your next displacement divided by time. It gives you your velocity. So I'm going to put them at one point. So the first one is... East, there's one going east, and that is the A leg, 0 0.758 kilometers, 0 0.758 kilometers. And then the next one is going south, or 0 0.370 kilometers due south, so I'll put it down here. 37 kilometers due south. And then I have 4.02 kilometers in a direction like this. Um, north of west, so like this. 78.6 so degrees, 4.02 kilometers. Good, so I need to find the net of these. So as usual, I'm going to get my x sum of x component, and that will give me 0 0.758, because it's already in the positive x, minus, because this will be in the negative x, 4.02 cosine 78.6 degrees. And this one doesn't have any x component, so that's the final one there. That will give me, so I'll do that in my calculator, 4.02 cosine 78.6 degrees. Two cosine 78.6 degrees. 0 0.7946. So I subtract that from 0 0.758. That'll give me minus 0 0.037 kilometers. Now let's do the summation of the y component. So this one doesn't have a y component. It's an x vector, so I don't do anything with it. This has a positive y component, 4.02 sine 78.6 degrees, then minus 0 0.37. Because that's going down. So let's do 4.02 sine sine 78.9.6 degrees. 3.94 minus 0.37. So this 3.94 minus 0 0.37. 3.571 kilometers. Okay. So I have my x component and a y component. So now I can get my the total displacement. So it's going to be d square. Is that okay? It's going to be d square. So they want just the magnitude, so I don't have to worry about direction. D square plus d square squared. So my total displacement 
think I can wipe this side off now. So my total displacement will be square root of 0.037 square. I don't I don't mind the minus because the square is gonna take care of it. Plus 3.571 squared. So let's do that. Take a square root, see if we get the answer there, which is 3.57. So 3.571 square, you can easily tell because it's almost zero, it won't do anything. So it will still give you 3.57, um, which is that of the y component. So this square, three 3.57 square plus 0 0.037 square is that, then take a square root of the answer, 3.57, that's what you get, 3.57 kilometers, so that's the correct answer. Now for the average velocity is the displacement divided by the time, so the time is 1.76716 hours, so my velocity average will be 3.57 divided by 1.76, uh, 1.716, so let's do that, 1.716, and that gives us 2.1 or 2.08 kilo, uh, kilometers per hour. 2.08 kilometers per hour. And that solves the problem. Okay? So that's the total displacement. And that's the total average velocity or the net average velocity. Okay. Now let's go to the next problem. So the next problem is this guy. Focus on concept question 15. What constant acceleration would a car starting from rest have? to sustain in order to reach a velocity of 27 meters per second due east in 3 seconds, okay? So you start from rest, so we just have to write out our variables here, okay? So V naught, so you are going east, so V naught x is 0, is that okay? So you are looking for A x, that's constant, we don't know what that is, but we know our final velocity x is 27 meters per second, and our time taken is 3 seconds. So they are looking for the acceleration. So we use the equation V final equals V initial plus a t. So v final is 27, v initial is 0 plus a x t is 3. So what is a x? 27 divided by 3 and that will give you 9 meters per second squared due east. It has to be in the same direction because you accelerate it. So that becomes it. It's just, this is 0, 3 a x is 27, so to get a x is 27 divided by 3 and you get that acceleration there. So we'll go to question 16, focus on concept. An airplane starts from rest and reaches a takeoff velocity of 60 meters per second due north in 4 seconds. How far has it traveled before taking off? So, before takeoff. So, we're looking for, when they say how far, they're talking about distance. When they say how long, they're talking about time. So, how far is distance? So, let's see the equation we're going to use here. So, it starts from rest, so V initial is 0. And reaches a takeoff velocity of 60 meters per second due north, so V final, 60 meters per second due north. So we are giving time, so we're looking for distance. So I know um, uh, so we are giving time. And we're looking for distance. So there are two equations we can use here. Since we have velocity, we have time. So the time is given to be uh, 4 seconds. So let's get the acceleration. V final minus V initial over time. So that is 60 minus 0 over 4. That will give us 15 meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration. So we need this acceleration to now get our distance because all our distance equations x minus x naught is v naught x t plus half a t squared it has acceleration in it or v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2 a x minus x naught 
So these are the equations that have distance, x minus x naught, but they all involve acceleration. So if I have not found this acceleration first, there's no how I could solve for distance. So I can use any of these equations now to solve. So let me use the first one. I will also prove it using the second one that you get the same answer, okay? So let's do it with the first one. So my distance is just x minus x naught, final position minus initial position, which is v naught t plus half a t squared. So v naught is zero, so this is just half times 15 times four squared. So four squared is 16, half of 16 is eight, so it's 15 times eight. Is that okay? Eight times uh, five is 40, is that okay? So it's zero carry four. That's one eight plus four, so that's one hundred and twenty meters. So the direction is still going to be north. So that's how they got the one hundred twenty meters due north. But now I want to use the other equation that v final squared equals v initial squared plus two a x minus x naught, and I will still get the same answer that I got here. So let's prove that. So from here, x minus x naught is v final squared minus v initial squared over two a. So let's see how that gives us. V final squared is sixty squared minus 0 over 2 times 4. So this is 3600 divided by 8. If you do that, you're still going to get 120 meters. So whichever equation you use, you are definitely going to arrive at the same answer. It doesn't matter the equation you use, either this or that, you get the same answer, so long as you have all the variables. Sometimes you are constrained with one equation because something is missing. Sometimes you have more than you need, and you can use any equation to get the, the problem right, okay? Okay, now let's go to the next one. It says, uh, question 17, a spacecraft is traveling with a velocity of plus 32,000 meters per second. Suddenly, the retro rockets are fired and the spacecraft begins to slow down with an acceleration whose magnitude is 10 meters per second. So we know if you are slowing down, that acceleration is minus what? So if this guy was minus, the acceleration will be plus. Since the velocity is plus, the acceleration will be minus. So now they are looking for how far does the spacecraft travel until it comes to a monetary halt. They're looking for the distance it traveled before it stops. Is that okay? So we are giving the initial velocity. <coughs> Excuse me. And if it's coming to a halt, the final velocity will be zero. So we have an initial velocity, V initial, which is V naught or V I, if you like, 3250. Acceleration is minus 10 meters per second squared. V final is zero because it's coming to a halt. They're asking us for time. So I'm going to use V final, um, um, they're looking, they're asking us for distance, so I'm going to use X minus X naught equals V naught T minus half G T squared, okay? Okay, oh sorry, A, I'm, I'm using G, just A, we'll do gravity problems, use G. But the problem with this, I don't have time, so I can't use this equation, but I have velocities, so I can't use this equation, so I'll use the one that v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a x minus x naught. So this will give me x minus x naught. I have a, I have vi, I have v final. So vi is what I call initial or v naught. Is that okay? So x minus x naught is v final squared minus vi squared over 2a. v final squared is 0 squared minus v initial squared 3, 2, 5, 0 squared over 2 times acceleration 2 times minus 10. Is that okay? So that's going to give us uh, 3250 squared divided by 20. So the negative signs will cancel. So we'll just have 3250 squared divided by 20. So let's do that in our calculator. And that will give us 5280 as it is there. So let's make sure. So I have 3250 squared divided by 20. Yes, 528125. Exactly. Is that okay? 528125. So they, they take it down to the nearest thousand, so it becomes 528,000. Is that okay? Meters. So this is 528125 meters, approximately 528,000 meters to the nearest thousand. Okay. All right. We we'll go straight to the next problem. Okay. It says a motorcycle has a constant acceleration of 3.73 meters per second square. Both the velocity and acceleration of the motorcycle point in the same direction. How much time is required for the motorcycle to change its speed 
from 18.3 to 28.3 meters per second. So you are changing your speed, you're looking for time. <coughs> Excuse me. So for constant acceleration, we know an object is moving with constant acceleration, we already know acceleration is V final minus V initial over time. So time will be V final minus V initial over acceleration. So that's it. So V final minus V initial, 28.3 minus 18.3 divided by acceleration, divided by 3.73. That'll give me my time for that, and this is just give me the exact. 2.681 seconds. And for the other one, the time is still the same, V final minus V initial of acceleration. So it will be, for the B part, 48.3 to 58.3. So 58.3 minus 28.3 divided by minus 48.3 divided by 3.7. And you get the same answer, 2.681 seconds. So that's easy. Problem 21. For a standard production car, the highest road tested acceleration ever reported occurred in 1993 when the Ford RS200 evolution went from zero to 26.8 meters per second, 60 miles per hour, in 2.93 seconds. Find the magnitude of the car's acceleration. So we are giving time, and we started at the, it went from zero to two points. So let's see that. Zero is your initial VI or V naught for that problem, and you have a final, and you have uh, the time. So acceleration, as we know, is V final minus V initial over time. So V final is given to be 26.8 miles per hour, so 60, um, 26.8 meters per second, sorry, minus zero over time at 60 miles per hour, 2.935. So if you do that, you're just going to get the answer of 9.13 meters per second squared. That's your acceleration. <clears throat> now let's go to problem 24. It says, in getting ready to slam dunk the ball, a baseball, a basketball player starts from rest and sprints to a speed of 10 0.3 meters per second. So it starts from rest. So V initial is zero and V final is 10.3 meters per second and the time taken is 3.78 seconds. So we're looking for the distance traveled. So we're going to use V final squared is V initial squared plus 2AX minus X naught. So X minus is X final minus X initial if you like. So that's your distance X minus X naught is V final squared minus V initial squared over 2A. And we're done. Okay. Huh. But now, we don't know what the acceleration is. Uh -huh. So we have to calculate um, that acceleration. Is that okay? So how do we calculate acceleration? Acceleration is V final minus V initial over time. So that's 10.3 uh, minus 0 over 3.78. So let's do that first. 10.3 divided by 3.78 2 2.725 so our acceleration is 2.725 so I'll write it here um, so a different problem so acceleration is 2.725 so now let's get our distance, x minus x naught, v final squared minus v initial squared over 2 times acceleration. So v final squared is 10.3 squared minus 0 squared over 2 times, the answer we just got, 2.725. So if you do that, ten point three squared divided by the answer you just got, 38.93. Oh, then divided by 2. I forgot to divide by the 2. 19.5. Okay. So 2 on that. So this goes 19.5 meters, exactly as we expect. Okay? Now let's go to problem 35. In an historical movie, two nights on horseback start from rest, 78.5 meters apart and ride directly towards each other to do battle. 
So at Georgie's acceleration has a magnitude of 0.385 meters per second square, why Sir Alfred has a magnitude of 0.218 meters per second squared relative to Sir George's starting point. Where do the nines collide? Where do they collide? Okay. Is that okay? So relative to Sir George's starting point. So let's see this. To see where they collide. There are different ways to solve this problem. But I'm going to use the easy way. Okay, so they are 78.5 meters apart and right directly towards each other. So we have Sir George and Sir Alfred. So let this be Sir George, SG, and this is Sir Alfred, SA. So the distance between them is 78.5 meters. Okay? So you can solve this problem using displacement. You can solve them just using distances. So I'm going to use distances. Is that okay? I'm not going to use displacement. I'm just going to use distances. So Sir George is moving at 0.385. Sir Alfred is moving at 0.218. So Sir George is moving faster. So they are going to collide somewhere here because Sir George is moving faster than Sir Alfred. So they will collide farther away from Sir George. A distance I call X. So the distance that Sir George has moved before collision is 78.5 minus x. That is the distance Sir Alfred has moved and Sir George has moved x. So we are looking for how far from Sir George they collided. Is that okay? Which is x. So they all start from rest. So this is v not 0. This is v not 0. Is that okay? But they have some final velocity there. And I have some acceleration there. Is that okay? I have some acceleration there. Okay? But there is one thing that is common between them. The time taken here and the time taken here is the same. It takes Sir uh, George a time t. It takes Sir uh, Alfred the same time t to get here. Just that like he was slower. So he was not moving to, he was faster within that time. That's why he covered more distance. So that, this thing that is common, so I'll do Sir Alfred's equation here. I'll do Sir George's equation here. So Sir Alfred's equation tells us from here that since they are starting from rest, the distance he traveled, x minus x naught for Sir Alfred, is v naught t, the start from rest is 0, half a t squared. Good. This for Sir Alfred, half a t squared. Is that okay? Because v naught goes to 0, okay? That would be half times, acceleration of Sir Alfred is 0 0.218 times t squared, okay? And I know this is uh, equal to 78.5 minus x. Okay? So let me do that here. So I'm still working for Sir Alfred. Um, half of 0 0.218, what is that? Half of 0 0.218, 0 0.109. 0.109 t squared is the distance traveled by Sir Alfred, which is 78.5 minus x. Is that okay? So what is t here? t is um, 78.5 minus x divided by 0 0.109 square root. So that is the time that Sir Alfred traveled in terms of x. But it's the same time for Sir George. So let's do Sir George's time. So we understand this diagram. So I'm going to do the same thing for Sir George. Okay. For Sir George, x minus x naught for Sir George equals 0 because it's also starting from rest. So it's supposed to be v naught t. Plus half a t squared, but because it starts from rest, that goes to zero. That's the same thing I did here. So I have half times acceleration of Sir George, 0 0.385 times t squared. So I know this is my definition of x. So what is t for Sir George? t for Sir George is square root of x divided by, so what is half of 0 0.385? Half of 0 0.385. 
zero point three eight five divided by two, you give us point one nine three. Zero point one nine three. Yes. So these two times are the same. So Sir George's time and Sir Alfred's time are the same. So I equate both. So the square root sign disappears. And then I have an equation to solve for x, which is what I'm looking for, the distance they collide from Sir George. Okay, so I'm just going to equate this. So I'm going to wipe this here to make this easy. So 78.5 minus x over 0 0.109. Square root equals that. So the square root signs cancel. So the square root signs cancel. So I have 78.5 minus x over 0 0.109 equals x over 0 0.193. So what do I have? 78.5 minus x times 0 0.193 equals 0 0.109x. Okay, so I solve for x. When 0 0.0193 times 78.5 1.515 Sorry. Is it a point one point one nine three times seventy eight point five? Okay. Let me do that again. Seventy eight point five. Fifteen point one five. Sorry. 15.15 minus 0 0.193x equals 0 0.109x. Is that okay? So 15.15 equals 0 0.193x minus 0 0.109x. So what would that give me? 0 0.193 minus 0.109. 0 0.0, 0 0.084. So this is 0.084x. So what is x? 15.15 divided by 0 0.084. So let's see what that gives us. So let's see if we made any mistake anywhere. So 0.218 meters per second square. That's 0 0.109. Okay. The 0.385. Point one nine three. Okay. Okay. So point one nine three times seventy eight point five. Fifteen point one one. Okay. So this is supposed to be fifteen point one one times seventy eight point five. Then times 0.193x equals 0.109x. So 0.193 minus 0.109.084x. Oh, sorry, plus. 0.193 plus. <laughs> this one is plus into this. Oh my goodness. 0.193 plus. 0.109, okay, 0.302x, 0.302x, okay, so it becomes 15.11 divided by 0.302x, so 0.302, 15.11 divided by 0.302. Fifty 
Meters. Exactly. Now we're on point. 50 meters. So you can just uh, watch it again, see what I did. It's a very easy uh, concept working with distances instead of displacements. Okay? All right. Now, let me go straight to... Um, Sorry, I'm excited for this. Straight to the next problem. So a person works for exercise, the person who works for exercise produces the position time graph show. So it's a position uh, plotted against time. <coughs> Calculate the average velocity including sine for segment A. So average velocity is total displacement divided by total time to get the slope of this. So the slope of this will give us velocity. So total displacement here is 1.25 minus 0 divided by total time 0 0.2 minus 0. So if I do 1.25 divided by 0 0.2, that will give me 6.25 kilometers per hour immediately. For segment B, it's the same. Total displacement, change in position, 1.25 minus 0 0.5, that will give us 0 0.75, divided by also 0 0.2, that will give us 3.75. And then for segment C, the same, the change in displacement, just change in the y-axis, is just from where it started to the end, is that okay? So this would be from here to here, 0 0.75 minus um, that. But for this part, it's negative. Okay, let me explain. Let me explain this really quick, why it's negative. In segment B, why do we have minus in segment B? Okay. So for segment A, we have 1.25 minus 0 over 0 0.2 minus 0. So that will give us 6.25 kilometers per hour. That's positive. For segment B, it started from here to segment A. Now it went from here to here. So this is the final position. Final minus initial. That's how you get your displacement. So 0 0.5 minus 1.25 divided by the time 0. 4 minus 0 0.2. Is that okay? So 0 0.5 minus 1.25, that's what's going to give us minus 0 0.75 divided by 0 0.2. So that's how you have a minus sign there to be. Minus 3.75 kilometers per hour for segment B. For segment C, initial position, final position. So final position is higher. 0 0.75 minus 0 0.5 divided by the time taken also now 0 0.8 minus 0 0.4. So this is 0 0.25 over 0 0.4. So that will give us 0 0.625. Then for the D is 0 because there's no change in position. So only change in time. So 0 over time will give us a 0 um, average velocity. So segment D gives 0 kilometers per hour. Segment C is 6, 0 0.625 kilometers per hour. So only segment D had negative, and segment D had zero. Okay? All right. Now let's continue to the next. A snowmobile moves according to the velocity time graph shown in drawing. What is the snowmobile's average acceleration? So we have velocity against time, so the slope of this will give us acceleration. So let's look at the first part. So the first part is change in velocity over change in time, 40 minus 0 over 20 minus 0. So this just gives us 2. Um, oh, okay, listen. So it's 40, but this one is a little above 20, so it's like 21. 21 minus 0. So it's 40 over 21. So that gives us not just 1.9 meters per second. Is that okay? Square. So it's acceleration. So acceleration is the slope, which is changing the y axis over changing the x axis. For B part, we have zero. There's no acceleration because there's no change in velocity. For C part, we have from about 48 to 60. Um, from about 48 to 60 in the time, 
So it will be 60 minus 48 in the time. And for up is 80 minus 40. 80 minus 40 is the velocity change, and 48 to 60 is the time change. So this becomes 40 over 60 minus 48. Is that okay? 12. So if you do that, you're going to get 3.3. Is that okay? 3.3 meters per second for that part. Okay? And that uh, solves it um, for that question. So let's go to the next question. So this one is uh, problem 12, chapter 3. A spacecraft is traveling with a velocity v not x, 6430 meters per second, along the x direction. So it doesn't have any y initial velocity. So it's moving directly in the x axis like this. If it's, it has only v not x, if it's moving down, it has only v not y. But if it moves in between, it has both v not x and v not y. But in this case, it's moving in the plus x direction, so it has only v not x. It doesn't have any v not y. So we might have a problem where it has both. So that's the first thing for you to note. Two engines are turned on for a time of 747 seconds. One engine gives the spacecraft an acceleration in the plus x direction with an acceleration in the x axis of 2.06 meters per second squared, while the other gives it an acceleration in the plus y direction. Now, we doesn't, we, this spacecraft doesn't have, or this, it doesn't have an, a y velocity, but it has, it, an engine is giving it a y acceleration. So we're going to solve the y equation separately from the x equations. So they're asking for the final velocities vx and vy. Okay, now let's see how that works. So we have initial velocity, we have acceleration, and we have time. So I'm just going to use v final is v initial plus at. So v final x is v initial x plus axt. So what is v initial x? 6430 plus ax 2.06 times 747. So when I do that, it will give me the answer there, 7968.2 meters per second. So that's my V final X. V final Y is V initial Y plus A Y T. So V initial Y is zero because we only had V initial X. So that's very important. Then plus A Y is given to be 7.76 times the same time, 747. When I do that, I get 5796.72 meters per second. So that's my VFY and that's my VFX. Straightforward. Then let's go to problem 25. Problem 25 says that um, on a spacecraft, two engines are turned on for 882 seconds at the moment when the velocity of the craft has x and y components of v not x and v not y. So the same problem, but now we have v not x 6770. So I'll put it here. 6770 for v not x. And v not y is not 0 this time. It's 5070. So I'll put it here. 5070 for v not y. While the engines are firing, the craft undergoes a displacement that has components. Oh! Oh! <laughs> now they gave us displacement and they're asking us why. So these equations would work. So I have to rewrite everything. So we're not using the same equations at all. We are not finding velocities. We are giving displacement. So, so now we are asked to find the components of the acceleration. Is that okay? The x and y components of the acceleration given. So I'm going to use um, uh, so we are given time. So I'm going to use x minus x naught equals v naught t plus half a t squared. So what is a from here? So a is x minus x naught minus v naught t so we have 2 here twice of x minus x naught minus v naught t divided by t squared that gives us a okay so now let's solve the problem so for the first one, ax will be 2 x minus x naught minus 
So this x minus x naught is this displacement giving 2.81 times 10 to the 6. 2.81 times 10 to the 6 minus v naught t. So v naught x is 677 times time 882 all over t squared. 882 squared. Yep. So if you do this, you should get minus um, 8.3. Let me make sure. Let me do that. I will get minus 8.3 as my ax before I go to the next one. So I have um, 6770 times 882. I get that. Then I subtract 2.8 times 6. So that's 281 with four zeros at the end, one, two, three, four, minus the answer I just got. Yes, that's already a minus answer. Then divided by 882 squared, 882 squared. Minus 4.06, then times two, times two, that will give me minus 8.13, correct, so that's correct. So do it for the y1, a y, will give you two into, so here becomes y minus y naught, so your y displacement, 4.22 times 10 to the 6 minus your v naught y t, v naught y is 50, 70, 50, 70 times 882 divided by all this, everything on top, divided by 882 squared. So you're going to get the minus 0 0.65. So this will give us minus 8.13 seconds. And this will give us minus 0 0.65 seconds. That's how you solve that. Okay. So let's go to the next problem. So which of the following statements is not true? So let's read carefully. The equations of kinematics apply to free fall motion. That's true. Near the Earth's surface, the acceleration due to gravity has the approximate magnitude of 9.8 meters per second. That's true. Points downward where the motion is downward. That's true. And points upward where the motion is upward. No way. It's always downward. Whether you are going upward or downward, acceleration due to gravity is always pulling you downward. So that's wrong. So it means all the rest should be true. Since they're looking for one that's not true. So let's make sure all the rest is true so we are not making a mistake. In free fall motion near the Earth's surface, the acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity. True. In the absence of air resistance, the motion of a baseball dropped from rest from the top of the building is an example of rainfall. True. In the absence of air resistance, the motion of a baseball, after being thrown straight upward from the ground, is an example of rainfall. True. Whether you are thrown upwards or down, it's still considered rainfall. So the one that is not true is B. Okay, that's the correct answer there. Now let's look at the next question. O2. Focus on concept question O2. At a certain point along the path in projectile motion, the projectile has a velocity v whose scalar components are vx equals plus 3 zero meters per second and vy equals plus 4 zero meters per second. As the projectile moves along the path, what would be its minimum speed? So it's moving here. Don't forget, here your vy is reducing. Your vx stays constant the whole motion because gravity does not affect vx. It's your vy that changes as you move from a high value to zero at this point and go. So at this point, when vy is zero, you only have vx. At every other point, you have some vy, and you're going to get a net of vy and vx. So at every other point, the net velocity is higher than just vx alone, except here, when vy is zero and you have only vx. So the minimum speed is when vy is zero and you have only vx, which is 30 meters per second. That's all. At every other point, you're going to have a component of vy that adds to 30 in a square, square root fashion that will be greater than 10. But at the top, when Vy goes to zero, only Vx exists, that's the minimum. Now let's go to this one. Two balls are thrown from the top of a building, as in the drawing. Ball one is thrown straight down, and ball two is thrown with the same speed, but upward at an angle theta, with respect to the horizontal. Consider the motion of the balls after they are released. Which one of the following statements is true? Which one of the following statements is true? Ball 2 has an acceleration in both the horizontal and vertical directions. No, it only has acceleration in vertical. Ball 1 has acceleration in the vertical. They both have acceleration only in the vertical. No acceleration in the horizontal at all. Both balls have the same acceleration at all times. Correct. The acceleration of ball 2 decreases as it rises, 
becomes zero at the top. No, it's never zero at the top. It's only the velocity that goes to zero at the top, the y component of the velocity. The acceleration of ball one becomes larger and larger as it falls. No, the acceleration is constant for both. So the correct answer there is that both have the same acceleration at all times, which is b. Next question. Each drawing shows three points along the path of a projectile. On one on its way up, one at the top, and one on its way down. The launch point is on the left in each drawing. Which drawing correctly represents acceleration of the projectile? So this is saying acceleration is zero at the top. That's not true. These two are correct. Acceleration is never upwards. So these two are wrong. Acceleration is never upwards. Acceleration is never this way. So the correct one is number four in this case. Acceleration is always down at every point. Always down. So that's the correct one, number four in that case. So look at the next problem. I think this is the last problem. Ball one is thrown into the air and it follows the trajectory for projectile motion shown in the drawing. At the instant, it is at the top of its trajectory. When you go here, at, when it is here, ball two is dropped. So the y, ball two is a total y thing. Ball one has x and y on its way down. Is that okay? X and y on its way down. The y of ball one is exactly the same y as ball two. They are going to have the same thing. Is that okay? So which ball reaches the ground first? So, since this guy was dropping, immediately this guy was here, they are going to drop down at the same time. So, ball 2 reaches the ground first, no way, both balls reach the ground at the same time, that's the correct answer. There is not enough duress error. They have to reach the ground at the same time because this is a Y thing, and this guy has both X and Y, and the Y part of its motion directly corresponds to this. So, they're going to reach the ground at the same time, okay? And that's the end of this um, um, homework 2, so we're going to see you on recitation 2. Thank you.